Good morning. Welcome to Washita Mountain Living Podcast. My name is Mike, and it is Saturday, April 6th, 2011. I don't know. Does dates really matter? If you put the video out every single day, do I got to say what day it is every single day? I would think not. And I ain't going to do it no more. All right. What's going on today? Well, not much. Same old thing, man. Got a lot of work to do, but do I choose to do it today? I don't know. I am going to get the tools back out today. In fact, I never put them up, really. Uh, when you start a construction project, a remodel, when you tear one thing out, you know, it gives birth to 15 micro projects. Uh... You know, like putting the floor in, okay? Well, when you put in vinyl plank flooring, you put the floor as close to the wall as you can get it, but you got you have to leave a little expansion gap. So that creates the you know the need for trim. And now I gotta cut baseboards, put baseboards, I got plenty of lumber, trust me, plenty of lumber to do baseboards. So that is something I need to get done. Uh, I'm not going to start on that until the kitchen cabinets are done. Uh, the one cabinet is built. If you've seen on my Dogman channel, I built the cabinet. What le what needs to be um, what needs to happen there is to put the countertop on, the facing on. It's all going to be cedar. It's going to match perfectly with what I already have. And then I have another cabinet up top that has to come down because it just, you know, it's not going to go with anything I do with the cabinet. And I like that cabinet, but I think I can save, I mean, I will definitely be able to save the lumber. I hope it's nailed in and is not screwed in like I build. When I build a lot of things with cedar, I use screws instead of nails because if you have to take it apart, the cedar is going to shatter. It, when cedar dries out, it gets really dry and brittle. You can't even drive a screw into it without splitting it. You have to pre-drill it. So, you know, I may have a little waste there, but hey, I built it and I'll build it again. Something different. I don't see it as a bad thing. Uh, yeah, I just got off looking on Amazon. Now I went, I got lazy. I got lazy the other day and didn't go to Walmart, which, you know, for me, a Walmart drive is practically a hundred mile round trip to the nearest one. Uh, if I go to the M Mina, it's 30 miles plus another seven for me to get on. So it's 40 miles round trip. But I didn't do that the other day when it was time to get dog food. I got lazy and I went to the dollar store. Well, they don't have roosters dinners. And I just got this to show you because I was looking online to buy these. Okay. Now, most everything you can get on Amazon and buy, usually cheaper than you can get it at Walmart or anywhere else. Not these. Not these. This box on Amazon. Now, these little dinners, they just, they're little. Uh, they're $1.25 a piece in Walmart. But if I'm buying this box, which there's 12 of them in on Amazon, they're 30 plus tax. So I won't be going that route. I guess I learned a lesson on being lazy. She w doesn't matter what you buy. If it costs more, she won't eat them. She won't eat them. This has to be on her plate with the Caesars. If you put just Caesars on there, guess what? She'll put her nose in the air. She won't eat it. She has to have one of these. You have to cut up the Caesars in very fine bites. And the Caesars has to soak up some of this gravy. Then she'll eat it. So I bought a pedigree pouch yesterday. Uh, tried to fool her. It didn't work. She ate it. But the way she does is she'll leave it sit. She lets it sit. She'll come over and sniff it. And she'll look up at me like, really? You're trying to fool me again? But when she gets hungry enough, she'll eat it. But she didn't eat the pouch. She ate the Caesars. She didn't eat that. So... That's what happens when you got a picky dog, guys. And, and they're all picky in their, their own way. At least the other four will eat whatever you put in front of them. And that's evident. And 
Millie, guess what? Millie, I hate saying guess what. I sound like a certain guy. Oh, it, uh, okay, note to self. Never say guess what again. What was it talking about? Oh, yeah. Millie has developed an ear issue. Just like Libby used to get every six months. So, fortunately, I have a lot of Libby's old medication, and I, I took her so many times, I know the drill. So, I took a beef treat, and there are little half pills. She gets one every 24 hours, just like an antibiotic. And I stuck it in the beef treat, and found out Millie is one of them dogs. Yeah, don't matter what you put the pill in, that's going to be the only thing left over. She found it, spit it out, it was laying on the ground. So what you got to do with Melly is she's a pig at supper time and I give her some Fridays are good gravy Friday. Yeah, their food, their wet food that I put in there dry has gravy. The rest of it's just like a dry, uh, you know, a pate style food. But we have good gravy Friday and good gravy Saturdays. So I put that pill in there right on top, um, put one of the pieces of meat, and put gravy on it first thing she ate so you got to come up with creative ways to get drugs down you know her ears are doing it's the exact same thing a lot of these long hair or long eared dogs develop these problems and the, the number one way you can tell is they're flapping their head a lot like that uh, it's not a hard thing to fix but it just happens with them usually when i take her to take the dog to the vet they clean the ear out real good I can't even touch it because if I go to pet her on the head, it's sore. I think she's a drama queen when it comes to pain. Uh, so we'll see. I'm keeping an eye on her. Hopefully the medication does its job. It always worked with Libby. And if I need more, then I can get more. But, you know, I've had dogs so long. I know a lot of these, how to, how to fix a lot of these issues. And they happen. And the worst thing, you know, and I'm seeing it right now is you see your dogs aging and it's it's progressing pretty quick in waldo and lily waldo will be 13. i say he's 13 okay i got him in 2012 along with his sister lucy and he was and i'm pretty good at judging an age of a dog especially younger dogs he would have been about 10 to 11 months old and i got him in september of 2012 so that puts him around being born November, December of 2011. And he gets around pretty good, but I've noticed him slowing down quite a bit in the last few months. And his hearing is just about all gone. And he's just about, he does have a little bit of hearing left because I was in the bathroom yesterday and I looked out the window and there he was. And I, I spoke loudly. I said, Waldo. But he just, he can't pinpoint where your voice is coming from. And he ran to the front gate and he's looking around barking. Uh, you know, and the first clue is they bark louder. You know, it's like a, a deaf person. They're going to talk louder. If you're listening to headphones playing music, you're going to talk like this. And it annoys people. But he's aging, you know, in dog ears. That's, what is it, seven dog ears? So, yeah, he's in his 80, early 90s, 80s, you know. That's old for an old pup, but he still runs, and he's just not as active, understandably. Uh, Rooster, you know, my youngest dog, well, Millie and Tilly are, are the youngest. Millie, I found out, was six years old, because uh, when the last time she ran away, she went back to the original owner's house. I hate using the word owners, because we don't own them, trust me. But uh, but he had given her away to somebody, and that didn't work out. The guy just left her. So she went back there, or she ended up there. He has papers on her. I guess she's registered in their hunting dog class. I'm, it doesn't concern me. Uh, but she's full blood walker, walker hound. So the tree and walker hound. There's papers and stuff. I don't care about papers. I told them I don't want no papers. But 
that's where she ended up. Where was this story coming from? What am, what, am I, what, am I, what am I talking about? Oh, her age. Yeah, he said she's about six. So, which, looking at her, is about right. I can start to see a little white face come on her eyebrows. And for that breed of dog, that is about right. They, that breed does not uh, have a long life. Uh, Wally, I had him nine years. And because I got him about the same time I got Waldo and Lucy. Lucy passed away when she was six. Just looked out the window one day. There she was laying on the ground dead. I took her to the vet, the body to the vet. The vet said she thought her stomach got twisted, which happens in dogs. She was healthy, running around. I looked out that window the night before at about 11 p.m. She was fine, running around with Lily. And, man, that was heartbreaking to see that the next morning. But Waldo has lived on. They were real brother and sister, litter mates. And, uh, you know, it's just something. If you're going to have dogs, you're, they're, they're, they, don't, they don't live as long as we do. It's very hard every time you lose one. You know, that initial pain really hurts. But it goes away. And then you just you got to just teach yourself to just remember them. And all the fun you had with them. And that's it, you know. And I know every one I have, I will lose, you know, Rooster. I wanted a little dog for inside because they live a lot longer. You know, Rooster's eight years old. I've had her eight years. Okay, so according to the paper, she came from Georgia from another rescue. According to the paper, she was two years old when I got her. And I look back at videos and pictures of her. She was, she was a puppy. She was not two years old. You know, a lot of the times these, these people that run these shelters, they just guess. And that was a bad guess. And the vet agrees with me. Uh, she was, she's probably nine. She couldn't have been no more than a year old when I got her. A uh, year and a half. So, Rooster, you know, she's nine, ten-ish. Somewhere around in there. But she's got a lot of years left. She, as spoiled as she is, oh... But yeah, I gotta. I guess I'm gonna have to go to Walmart because I am not gonna pay thirty dollars for these. And this isn't even the best foods, guys. It's such a cheap food, but she likes them, and you gotta give them what they like. Maybe if I went in there and wore this hat as a hat, yeah, that didn't work out. Maybe the box is too small. That's what the problem was. Ah, oh, I am waiting for a router to come in the mail to finish my countertop. I haven't even started on my countertop, the butcher block. Uh, but I need a router because the edges of the uh, butcher block are just straight, pointy, square. i got to put a half round around them. I also need a, the router. I've got to make a little lip. I've got to cut a hole for the stove top, but it has to have a little lip in there that that will rest on so it will be flush with the counter and I got a plunge I've got the fixed router and then I've got the plunge attachment and what the plunge allows you to do is put your router anywhere in the middle of a piece of wood and you can you can come down and start uh, if you didn't have the plunge it would you couldn't do that you couldn't you can't take a fixed base router and just you know start routing in the middle of a piece of wood but a plunge router will allow you to do that and I bought the combo I bought a Bosch uh, Bosch makes the best routers I've always thought so they got a five star rating and then I had to order bits router bits are not cheap but you got to have them but that is a tool I should have had a long time ago that makes woodworking that brings it to a whole nother level if you do cabinets doors anything like that you have to have a router uh to make them stand out and you'll see you know it's been a long time since i've run one but like riding a bike you don't forget all right guys i've rambled on 15 minutes here talking about dogs but you know uh, i'll take my dogs any day over people dogs are loyal and people are not no matter how loyal you think somebody in your life is they will throw you under the bus before a dog will. And that is the truth. And you find that out all the time. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Happy trails.